Where are you at? We are pretty much like an hour. We're in Dawesville, and pretty much like an hour south from Perth. Come down just with a couple of the team just to sort of get away, train a little. Got a gym nearby, so we're just, yeah, just sort of isolation training, which is cool. Is that something that you've done recently, or is that something you do always? Just normally, like the last two fights we were in the U.S., so we'd go to the U.S., we'd end up being there like two weeks before the fight. So then we, me and Ben were thinking we may as well get out and like, and when, we, when we're when we in the U.S., we pretty much just, nothing else really matters. We just focus on like training and just relaxing. So we thought we'd just get away and do the same, keep that same sort of schedule here. And we thought where to go and head down here. My granddad had a place down here. So we just come here and just isolate ourselves and chill. That's nice. That's nice, man. It seems like... Yeah. Uh... Yeah, well, Australia is, is a pretty big country it's where you can pretty much isolate yourself. It's not a difficult thing isolate, to do. Yeah, you don't have to go far and you're isolated, so it's pretty cool. Yeah, and I think a lot of people don't know that uh, Perth and Singapore, they have the ta- same time zone, and also it's yeah. only like a couple hours flight, so it, it must be nice not having to fly 20 hours, right, to go fight. Yeah, real nice. It's, only, it's literally, I think it's a five and a half hour trip, same time zone. Heaps of friends and family has sort of seen that and thought this is the time to go and support as well. So it'll be it feel like home. I feel this fight. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, let's talk about this fight coming up. UFC 275, Ramazan Imiv. Many will look at this as a huge step up in competition for you, especially for your second fight in the UFC. Do you look at it the same way? Yeah, I do. I feel like it is definitely the toughest fight of my career probably yeah big step up in competition which is exactly what i'm after so yeah i can't wait to show everyone that this is actually in isn't actually a step up in competition and we're gonna have to step it up a little bit more but yeah that's the beauty of this sport is you can all find out what the goal is on fight night yeah you've always been open about that about fighting the best guys possible you know what I mean? Yeah. A lot of people say that, but they don't really mean it. But you really mean it. Like, you will fight guys like Ramazan, which I think a lot of guys coming into the UFC would not even step in there with. Because I'm not saying that they're scared. It's just the, the level of competition is different. Yeah. I sort of just trust my ability. I trust the skills and I trust, like, my team and the coaching around me. And, yeah, I really want to challenge other, the best guys I possibly can. And yeah, so I always, like all my fights, I always try and get the toughest fight. I've looking at Ramazan when that fight was offered. I thought, yeah, this is an awesome test. Like a big, strong wrestler. He's been around the game for a long time, pretty well rounded everywhere. And he's been through many, like three round fights. This is a three round fight. So he's going to be well conditioned to go three rounds. So yeah, it's a good step up and good challenge. Outside of the, the, the wrestling, you know, what do you see in, in Ramazan, in, in his skill set? To be absolutely honest, I feel like he's pretty he's pretty well-rounded. He's got good wrestling. He's got his striking's pretty good. But I reckon he's pretty flat-footed. I think he's too flat-footed for my sort of style. I'm going to be trying to move a lot and sting him and then move and sting him again and move. And I reckon it's going to be a bit too much for him. I think he's too flat-footed and I'm going to be too elusive for him. But we'll see how it goes. Yeah, he's you know he's had seven fights so far in the UFC. All of them have gone to decision. Do you change things up a little bit in in camp when you see a guy that is not finishing fights and and goes to the to the distance a lot? No, nah, not really. We don't change up a whole lot in fights. It's a yeah a mixed martial arts fight. You got to be ready for everything. And I think number one in for our sort of game plan is yeah basically just implement our own game plan we don't really set anything it's pretty much the same game plan every time obviously i don't want to get taken down and stuck on my back but that's the same as every fight i never want to get taken down and stuck on my back and i want to do damage and i want to bust my opponent up pretty badly so that's the same game plan every time is is so, that yeah. is that why you kind of is is that why it's kind of easy for you to get started quick so in some fights yeah i think so I really, I think so. Yeah, my game plan, yeah, never changes. So yes, yeah, easy for me to get get it going. 
and uh, you get to kick off the the pay per view pay per view portion of UFC 275. It's it's a good showcase slot for yourself, and and definitely a better chance to uh, get that that bonus that you didn't get last time. Yeah, for sure, hundred percent. That would be yeah, that's exactly right. The the fight and getting the win and beating up a Ramazan is obviously number one goal. But yeah, so yeah, where we are, the reception isn't too good. Yeah, yeah. I even have to hot phone. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Let's uh, let's jump to the next one. You know, uh, actually, let's rewind a little bit to to last January when you made your UFC debut, UFC two seventy. You know, they they switched up your opponent last minute. Many people thought that you weren't even fighting because they weren't announcing anything about your fight, but you were still in the U.S. How hectic was the last two weeks up to that fight? Um, it to be honest, it wasn't actually too hectic. We it was two weeks before the fight we found out that Wally Alves was out, so that was pretty upsetting. We'd worked hard and we were so happy with that matchup, but the UFC sort of promised. They said definitely still come. We'll definitely get your uh, uh, fighter to fight. So really had no reason not to like trust the UFC. So we made the trip and yeah, pro- as to their word, they got us an opponent. It wasn't definitely wasn't the caliber opponent I wanted, but that's really nothing that I can control. We've just got to go in there and basically do the exact same thing that I was going to do to Wally Alves, and I feel like that's what I did. And but yeah, I did what I had to do, and better, bigger, and better opponent this time, which is awesome. Well, how you explain your preparations? It seems like if anybody comes last minute, you're able to fight them because that's just how you prepare for fights. Yeah, for sure. I reckon I'd be true to my word. I think if I ever, in future, if I ever get a late pull out and they can replace it, I'd never pull out of that fight. Because yeah, same thing. It doesn't. We don't really make a crazy game plan. The the game plan is try not to get stuck on your back and try and damage your opponent and move. How was the the big stage for you? You know, what I mean, it's a big pay per view. You know, there's crowd there. It's just sometimes it can be overwhelming. It, yeah, it was pretty incredible. It wasn't. I wouldn't say it was overwhelming. It was just I really just went out there, took it all in, and I enjoyed the whole process. There was no no bits where it was too overwhelming for me. I just it was definitely like wow. Like I, when I was walking out, I was like wow, I'm really here. Like this is the real deal. Like all the all the things that you see on the TV, like the big crowd, and then you see the commentators and all that. It was definitely incredibly and i took it all in but yeah never was too overwhelming that i couldn't fight i just enjoyed the enjoyed every single moment of it and then come the second was to fight i was so ready to go that and nothing else really mattered at that point yeah and uh you, you know you mentioned that you're isolated with your team uh one of your teammates jack becker he's pretty much gone viral for you know breaking his leg you know what i mean something yeah. that we never expect in a million of years you know what i mean and uh you know, hope he's okay. What was your reaction to that unfortunate? Oh, that was, yeah, that was, I've seen those, you see those, like, I've seen it, obviously, we've all seen a couple of those breaks on TV, and it's just, whenever you see it, it's just like, whoa, like, you really, it's the last thing you really expect to see and want to see, and then to have to see it live with, like, yeah, one of your best mates, one of your, like, training partners, someone that you spend every day with training hard, and to see that sort of, happen it's yeah it's really, it's really like heartbreaking you know just knowing how much work he put in how close he was to getting such a good win defending his title and then possibly going on to the some bigger and better fights and yeah it was just really like heartbreaking to be honest it still is heartbreaking every time i think about it, it really does break my heart but jack is such a tough dude that he'll definitely he'll bounce back from that and yeah he'll be back for sure but yeah, it's obviously just a time thing. Any update on on Jack? I believe Jack has had surgery, and yeah, basically he's they the doctor. I think the surgeon said he should be able to be back walking within a couple of days. Obviously on crutches, very slowly, but yeah, basically just I guess rehab just begins now. But yeah, surgery all went well, and Jack is in good spirits. He's a tough, like durable person, so he's okay. Yeah, yeah. Everybody should be, uh, you know, sending Jack good yeah, messages. Sure. You know what I mean? Good vibes. Yeah. Um, like 100%. you said, he is he is one of the the guys that are 
coming up and still is one of the guys that are coming up in the Australian scene. We'll see him in the next couple of years on that big sure. stage. And also he was, he's been a big part of your, your training camps, right? Yeah, hundred percent. He joined. Um, he he's been in Perth, obviously. Yeah, he's a Perth boy, but we only really sort of started training together probably the last two years. And yeah, since Jack and Rod, Jack Becker and Rod Coster have sort of joined our team, where our team has really gone from strength to strength. We have a really good team bond since he's joined. So yeah, massive part of the team. Really, like he's almost like a team captain for us. And to see that happen, yeah, it's just hard. Heart gut wrenching and heartbreaking, you know. Yeah, definitely, definitely gut wrenching, but also it can be inspiring. You know what I mean? The, yeah, sure. His comeback story is going to be just as incredible as anybody else's. Yeah, for sure, it's going to be an incredible story to see him back, and he'll be back in the the big leagues for sure very soon. You know, you pick up that big knockout in your debut. You know, with that USC label has has more people jumped on to support you you know what i mean like sponsors things like that uh yeah a little bit there's, there's a lot of support like since those fights and it's sort of just the yeah a lot of people reach out and just sort of see that yeah i am gonna be here to fight and i'm gonna put on shows and but yeah i'm looking forward to that <clears throat> um there's gonna i think after i get someone like a no disrespect to pete but after i get someone that's a well-established UFC fighter, and I do the same thing to them. I think the support will grow as well. But, yeah, the support has been incredible. A lot of people reaching out and just giving me love, which I appreciate a lot. Do you look at the welterweight division as probably the, the division where there's, of course, fights for, you know, title elimination and all these things, but there's also a lot of guys out there that are exciting fights, you know, fights that will draw a lot of attention from the fans. Is that the best weight class to be in, do you think, right now? Yeah, I think it is definitely one of them, one of the best weight classes. I think the lightweight division's on fire as well. But, yeah, I think the welterweight division being sort of right in the middle of the big boys and then the it's like that pretty much the like middle division. I think it's always going to be a pretty exciting division. A lot of, like, athletic guys in that division, still very skillful. So, yeah, I think it's a banging division to be in. I'm so happy to – I'm so happy that this is where I fit in. Yeah, definitely. And and how do you see yourself uh, picking up that second UFC win? Uh, I see the same sort of thing. I see a finish. I really want to get the finish, and I'm going to be gunning for the finish and s for this from the start. So, yeah, I'm looking to get that finish for sure. And, uh, you know, there's a rumored event later this year in Australia. Have you heard anything about it? Uh, yeah, I've, it's the same sort of thing. I have heard rumors of such. But there has been, I believe there has been room, this sort of rumor going around for a long time. So hopefully everything just, yeah, hopefully it does fall together. And if it does fall together, I'll def 100% be on that card. Yeah, yeah, 100%. That's, uh, sure. that's without a doubt, Jack. Um, anyways, before that even happens, man, June 11th, UFC 275 in Singapore. Appreciate the time as always, man. It's great to see you coming up in the division and just coming up in the in the promotion. Thank you so much, man. John, thank you. Pleasure. Nice talking to you.